Welcome to a noob's guide to Thoric Ironbrow. This is Thoric Ironbrow, the greatest dwarven rune lord of his age and possibly ever. From atop his anvil of doom, he terrorizes friend and foe alike as he seeks to reclaim lost artifacts from ancient dwarf holds. Thoric Ironbrow is a free legendary lord available for the Total War Warhammer series. As a master rune lord, Thoric has ruled with an iron fist over the weapon shops deep in Karak Azul for centuries on end. In the best of moods, he's an irate terror to his apprentices, and at his worst, they discover he's called Ironbrow because he sticks that horned helmet so far up dwarf backsides it needs super orbital reinforcement to keep from snapping. As the greatest living rune lord, it falls to Thoric to pass along his knowledge to the next generation, and Thoric takes the education of runesmiths very seriously. He prefers the Socratic method by way of Gordon Ramsay, questioning everything his students do and then taking as much time as necessary to properly berate and insult him. What's that in? Everything? useless! What are you? <laughs> Idiot sandwich! Due to an employee turnover rate even fast food can't match, runesmiths who make it to the end of Thoric's education program are among the best in the world. Hero recruits start at level 5 in his faction and are 25% cheaper to keep around due to forced self-sufficiency. How do I- Not like that, you wazzik! Many call Thoric Ironbrow a traditionalist, with his penchant for casual day drinking, flaunting of basic OSHA safety practices around fire, and constant need to establish workplace dominance. Useless. Truly, he epitomizes a bygone era. Thoric refuses to tolerate any newfangled technologies. Thoric even makes it a point to kick every fax machine he encounters, so that when a hapless engineer is called in to fix it, he can subject them to a tirade on the wonders of overhead projectors and mimeographs. If it was good enough for our glorious ancestors, they're good enough for you. And while many dwarfs see the Engineers Guild's mechanical creations as their hope for survival, Thoric feels that if it has more than two moving parts and you can't slap a rune on it, it's not dwarf. Fortunately, Thoric doesn't lend just his counsel, but also his glistening arms to the dwarf cause. He wants to reclaim the lost dwarf holds and bring back nothing less than the Dawi Empire. Thoric is constantly on the move, aiding throngs from clans and holds across the world. That's why his faction is called Ironbrow's Expedition. Thoric isn't actually the king of Karak Azul, that's Kazador Dragonslayer, but he's preoccupied with his own problems and lets the Rune Lord do as he pleases, only requiring the occasional busy work quest and triplicate paperwork common to management in every universe. Thoric is always happy for a new TPS report, though, as it's easy kindling for his forges of war. From Thorgrim Grudgebearer to Belagar Ironhammer, there isn't an expansionist minded dwarf alive that isn't glad to hear the ring of Thoric's anvil on the battlefield. Sitting atop his anvil of doom, with each strike, Thoric pulls magic from the air and forges it into controllable runes. He uses techniques passed down by his master, who learned it from their master, who was taught by another master, who learned it back at the dawn of time from magical space lizards. Hammering on the ancient anvil unleashes its power, calling forth fire, lightning, and thunder, making it magic dwarf style. You can buff your friends, blow up your enemies, slow them to a crawl, or just outright ignore any psychological attacks against you, all of which are now treated like a proper lore of magic on the skill tree and battle screen. And the best part is, since they're runes and not magic, you can use them infinitely. No mana pools, just long cooldowns and lots of ass kicking. These extended timers are a godsend when you have a doom stack of runesmiths. Since they have independent cooldowns, by the time you circle back to Thoric, they're ready for another go. The Anvil of Doom amplifies this power. Thoric unlocks his at level 9, and boy does it whip the llama's ass, striking fear into anyone who sees it and creating a locus of power so that any would-be mage blows themselves up a bit whenever they cast a spell near it. To keep the ground-based mount from being outclassed in late game, it even gets an anvil guard upgrade. Dwarves sworn to protect the ancient hunk of metal and die rather than see it fall into enemy hands. They're joined by Thoric's much-abused assistant, Craggy. He's the rune fluffer that preheats the anvil and polishes Thoric's hammer until it's ready to burst with magic. As they say though, behind every great genius is an unpaid intern that does all the paperwork and enables these sociopaths in the hope they'll one day too be recognized. And if they don't say that, they damn well should, as all Craggy's work has only earned him a position as token follower in-game. When the two are in sync though, this I promise you, they'll be tearing up the hearts of anyone they come across. Thoric pops and clangs his anvil, waving bye-bye to enemy spells and smiting any who would dare defy the might of the dwarfs. If anvils of doom, what? Seriously? Nothing that time? Oh, come on. 
If anvils of doom are so powerful, you're likely wondering why the dwarfs don't just make hundreds of them and raffle stomp their way to global domination. The secret to creating them and their ancient forge was destroyed in a dragon attack, along with many sacred runes and blessed tools and dwarfs in that order of descending importance. The entirety of Dawi lore, in fact, could best be described as everything was great until Blank showed up, where Blank is anything that's not a dwarf, though sometimes it's also a dwarf. With the fall of each dwarf hold, millennia of knowledge and hoarded technology is lost. So for Thoric, the future of the dwarfs lies in the past. When he's not banging away in his anvil all day, he's searching for forgotten and sealed treasure vaults. Each new discovery of ancient runes and artifacts helps keep the lore of his fathers alive and ensures that no other holds fall. The recovery of these lost artifacts is Thoric's in-game mechanic. You'll know where one's located as the city will be highlighted with a pillar of light shooting into the sky surrounded by giant glowing runes. It's a wonder no one's found the artifacts before, really. Once you've found the necessary pieces, you'll combine them together and assemble artifacts of tremendous power, get a few shekels for your trouble, and be able to field a leashed Carnosaur. That last one doesn't feel very dwarf to me, but the way Thoric treats other dwarves, caging exotic animals, really isn't out of character. The artifact locations aren't randomized, though, so in both of his campaigns, Thoric will work his way up through the mountains to victory, donning his daisy dukes and tank top to raid any tombs he comes across. Too bad most of them have a rat problem, and the only cure is more cowbell and a liberal application of runes. To help slaughter your foes and spend your oath gold, Thoric brings with him a soft rework of the dwarf forge mechanic, now allowing you to craft both character and banner runes if you have the necessary oath gold and resources. With Thoric, you're likely never to run out of oath gold as he gets 50% more of it from buildings and crafts runes with oath gold at half cost. Up to three character runes can be inscribed onto a dwarf at any time in the character panel, and banner runes are crafted, given to a lord and then assigned at the start of each battle. As you can't chisel onto a cloth banner, this does raise a runic production issue, but nothing that can't be solved by Thoric painting happy little trees atop his Anvil of Doom. But Thoric much prefers wailing away on it with clad Brakak. Obtained through an in-game quest, Thoric's anvil-headed rune hammer is inscribed with a rune of his own design, where that design gives frenzy, makes Thoric immune to fear and terror, and bombards the area around him with lightning while the immigrant song plays. The hammer's rune is unique, and Thoric has only struck it the once. It's only a few centuries old, after all, and he doesn't want to rush the QA testing. That's how cyberpunk happens. Thoric's rune armor is also available in-game. Made by Thoric himself, it can turn a giant's club or let him walk through a dragon fire with only a singed beard. Sadly, his rune armor in-game has zero runes on it and makes him look a bit like a Warcraft NPC. If you haven't picked up on it yet, Thoric is a lean, mean, dawi buffing machine, with a unique skill line that further improves runesmiths and makes getting oath gold even easier, so it can be spent on sweet, sweet runes. Military-wise, he buffs quarrelers, belt throwers, and grudge throwers. So you can finally cut all that steampunk nonsense and field a proper ranged dwarf army, powered entirely by wood and dwarf muscle, the way God intended it. Because if there's one thing Thoric can't stand, it's weak-wristed dwarfs. Which is just so Thoric. His entire traditional worldview requires him to display strength and endless bravado in the face of death and a crumbling empire. He can't stand the idea of change, because every time something new comes along, it's made his life worse. It's a tale told in every blue-collar country song for the last 50 years. In fact, it's so common, I even wrote my own. This here's the Ballad of Thoric Ironbrow. Cooking his meals in a cast iron pan, then swigging his beer from a pull top can. Ain't never met a ringsmith worth a spit, won't teach him nothing, rather see him quit. Solving all his problems with muscles and a hammer, he'd learn to chisel rune cause it don't need grammar. Cracking in anvil is all he needs to lift them dwarps up off their knees. But he don't use nothing that takes a cog, don't care for digital, he's strictly analog. Raring to go and mean a spit, just put a hammer in his hand and watch it hit. Anvil soda, boys. And that's a noob's guide to Thoric Ironbrow. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to be notified about future releases, or join the Patreon and support in their creation. You can vote on which noob's guide will be next and get a warm, fuzzy feeling from knowing you helped buy one third of a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching.